how to kill a buck. That is what we're talking about today and all this season. As twice a month, myself, Spencer Newharth, and Tony Peterson are going to be breaking down how to hunt for a mature buck at different parts of the season and then taking a look at an example property and trying to examine how we might approach this place at this time of year. That's our game plan. Today we're going to kick off with early September. We're going to be looking at a property in Kentucky and I think we should start with a couple high level ideas, some key pointers to think about this time of year. Spencer, where's your head go when you think early September deer hunting? So early September, I think, uh, mirrors like the end of the season. So you're looking for the same things, the obvious food sources, water, stuff like that. Uh, and I think one of the food sources that people will uh, kind of have some misconception, misconceptions about are yellow soybeans. Um, People get deterred to hunt yellow soybeans quite often. They think the deer are not interested in them at that stage. But I, I don't think that's the reality. Um, it just happens to be that during that like one to two week phase where the soybeans are turning yellow, there's also a buffet of other food available out there. You have apples, uh, mushrooms, persimmons, berries, plums, some acorns at that time. Then you have unnatural food sources that are better options like alfalfa, um, apple orchards, corn, things like that. Clover. So, clover. I don't think it's that the deer dislike yellow soybeans. If that's the only food source around, they're still going to be hitting it. But at that time of year, there's just a lot of options available. So know what the deer are hitting, and sometimes that is those yellow soybeans. And I think one of the things we've been debating here uh, earlier today was just the fact that you look at a bean field and say, oh, it's, it's yellowing, it's dead. Mm -hmm. But there actually are these little pockets of green beans, there's little leaves here and there, and, and deer are selective browsers, right? They know to select for what they like the most. So they'll go through a yellow bean field maybe and find those that are still palatable. So it's worth targeting, and, and, and even we talked earlier today, that sometimes can help you focus in on the little pocket where there is yep. some green beans maybe where they're at. So that's, that's a key point. I would add that, yes, early September I'm thinking about food. I'm also thinking about the fact that what's going for me at this time of year is that no one has been hunting, right? If you're hunting early September, you're hunting the very first hunting available, typically, right? So I wanna strike as early as I possibly can and take advantage of that. If I have the availability to hunt opening night, I'm hunting opening night. If it's not that, it's, it's as soon as I can get the time off, as soon as I can get to that property, because I wanna take advantage of the fact that bucks should be on a consistent bed to feed pattern. They're gonna be bedding in one place, some general region, they're gonna be heading to some general food source, if I can figure that out and make sure that no one else has screwed up yet, you've got a better chance than almost at any other time of year because of that. So that's on my mind. Tony, what about you? Uh, you know, I'm in the same boat. And the one thing I would say that I've, I've really learned to do that time of year is, you know, we're talking changing food sources. We're talking, you know, multiple options, but you're dealing with destination food sources typically. Yep. So, you know, even though they might browse their way to that soybean field, they're probably coming there. And we kind of get locked into that you know, bachelor group coming into a certain spot or, or a specific field. But I would say scout long distance glass right up to the moment you're gonna hunt because that stuff changes. And even if you're talking the first couple of days of September, you'll see those bucks go from velvet to hard antler and things change. Yeah. And so stay observant, keep watching and give yourself some options. So if you've got a bachelor group coming in that you really, really wanna hone in on, on a certain field, that's fine but they may only come out on a specific trail with the right kind of wind. Yeah. And so you might not get that opening night. So you want to hunt, you might push it, blow those bucks off that pattern on day one. If you got a plan B, plan C, if you've watched some other stuff happen and you're okay, okay, now I know this buck's coming out of this field, these bucks are coming out here, give yourself some options so you're not forced to push it opening night when you shouldn't be. Yeah, I think it's key is to, it, it should be an informed strike. Mm -hmm. Like you should have a very clear idea of, of why you're going somewhere. And maybe that's determined via trail camera. Maybe that's determined via an observation sit. Even before season, you can be sitting way off in the distance observing you should to try be. to get that intel. Yeah, I think that's great for this time of year. So that is a great way to focus it. Find that good food. Take advantage of the fact that hunting pressure hasn't screwed things up yet. And then make sure it is well informed with observation. With all those things in mind, I think we should take a look at our example property and kind of break it down. Now, this is a farm that Spencer, you have hunted in the past in Kentucky, a piece of private land. Tony and I have never hunted this before, so we're going to kind of walk through the first things that jumped out to us. For me, when I see this field, it's the kind of, kind of farm I like a lot. I've seen this kind of place in the Midwest. I love these long fingers of ag. 
I'm hoping, if this is an early September hunt, I'm hoping this is a soybean field. I'm hoping that there are still some, I mean, maybe yellow soybeans, maybe some green soybeans. Either way, I hope there's something the deer is still feeding on. I'm going to key in on that. Now, the first thing I jump to then is, okay, where are these deer going to come out into these bean fields? I'm wondering where are those bucks bedded to figure that out. So what jumps out to me is that there's a lot of topography here. You can see these fingers sticking out, high fingers up here, some fingers off on this side, and then ridges that drop down to the bottom. So I noticed a couple points, like this point here, this point here, this point down here, that would set up, I think, perfectly for a buck to bed off on that point. He could see down into the bottom beneath him, and he could smell anything behind him, and then move up into that field to feed at night. I would probably, depending on, you know, access and all that stuff, I would probably try hunting one of these little fingers of ag, little bean fields, hoping that a mature buck would be coming off into it. Now, of course, that observation you talked about, that would help a lot. Yeah. What about you? So, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. And, you know, you got to love these little tiny fingers of fields. You know... You know the first couple days of the season, first couple weeks of the season, deer are going to enter there. Yeah. They're going to do it probably in relation to a south or west wind, which is going to be your prevailing wind. And so you may want to just get right in there. You've probably run some trail cameras on those spots, had pictures of big bucks coming out. But my strategy might be to hang back and watch the first couple nights and just, just cheat my way in, pay attention to who's coming out where and what the wind is doing and then move in. But I think those areas, you can see with the topography, it's dropping off there. Yep. I mean, they just look like awesome spots to catch a buck. And the other thing that I like about that, you can see that, you know, the elevation line there. Yep. Some of these, these little fingers like that of uh, fields, they drop off. And it only has to be just a subtle little drop. And I would say just by looking at this, that probably does that those bucks can get in there, feed, and not be visible very well from yeah. anywhere. So you might you might go out with your spotting scope and not see those deer. From the road, yeah. You might get into a tree stand here and be able to see them. Yep. And so it's just kind of a cautious creep into those places, for, waiting for the conditions to be right, figuring yeah. out who's coming out where. I like setting a stand, like an observation stand on this point right here, because then you could observe that little finger. You could hopefully observe the back of this little finger of ag right there and there, maybe even see this little corner. That'd be a great spot to start and just observe and then see, okay, where do I need to actually focus? Mm -hmm. All right, Spencer, you actually have been on this place. Where is your head at? I'm impressed with how well you guys did with that. One thing, Tony, you picked up on was these fields that kind of fade down into the timber. You're exactly right. Uh, even if you're in one of these areas just being like 15 feet off the ground, you can't see like over into these other low spots <laughs> of the field. And so it's kind of challenging. But you guys also identified like one of the primary bedding areas on this property, which is in this area. And, and where that funnels to is this very lower field. And one of the other reasons that this is one of my favorite places to set up for an early September hunt, like right in this area, would be because there's a high ridge behind you. So you get a south wind, you're not worried about blowing any deer out at that point. You're not gonna have a deer that sneaks up on you uh, shows up from behind you and you know blows you out a hundred yards back right. a deer you didn't even know was there that's not going to happen in that area and in a state like Kentucky where you have an extremely liberal season that's very long you have multiple gun seasons in between you can kind of pick and choose where you're going to take these shots at a deer so early season like this I'd be safe um, and that is one place I would love to set up deer are going to funnel out there you're going to have a lot of activity and you guys were correct that these are soybean fields, and it's some of the best food available in that area in very, very early September. So one of the things when I was looking at this, we saw there's a lot of topography, right? This looks like a pretty steep ridge, like you said. Mm -hmm. This looks like a creek bottom and, and a ridge coming back up on this side. Yep. So one thing I worried about when I looked at this was if there'd be like swirling winds down at the bottom. Did you have any wind issues at all with that? I, I wouldn't notice that too much. Um, and it seemed like Kentucky hardly had any wind to begin with from the few times I've been there. I'm used to coming from the Great Plains where it's windy every single day right, and almost story. all the wind swirls where you're at, but I didn't experience that too much in Kentucky. And like I said before, I, I like the safe setups this early in the year when you have so much season ahead of you. Makes sense. All right, well, I feel like I've got a good idea about how to approach this now. It's the kind of spot I'd love to hunt in early September, so maybe you'd invite too. us out there this year. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> Can we do that? All right, well, with that, I think we should wrap it up. I will just let you know that if you'd like more information like this, you can check out Wired to Hunt's Rut Fresh Radio, which is our podcast episode that comes out every week in which Spencer and myself talk about what is happening right now 
in the whitetail woods week by week by week all throughout the season and then talk to four or five different hunters from across the country to hear about what they're seeing what's happening in the woods how are they hunting and how do they plan to hunt in the coming days it's really helpful tony you've been a part of it too mm -hmm. i think it's something worth checking out make sure you subscribe to that podcast and make sure you're subscribed to this youtube channel to make sure you see all of our future videos as we go on throughout the year so until then good luck on. Thank you.